How's it going everyone? As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne and this is Deck Ready, my channel all about the Steam Deck and other gaming handhelds. In today's video, I've got three great topics for you guys. The first one is that the Steam Deck is struggling with two of the biggest new games and I'm here to tell you why that doesn't matter. Next, we're going to talk about a Steam Deck competitor that's DOA. And finally, we're going to talk about a great game that just got deck verified that I'm excited to jump back into. So first up, let's talk about these two games that the Steam Deck can't run and why it ultimately doesn't matter for the future of the Steam Deck. Every time a game comes out like Horizon Forbidden West and Dragon's Dogma 2, and these games have trouble holding 30 FPS on the handheld. You see a round of articles from different websites saying that people are losing faith in the Steam Deck. Is it slowing down? Is it time for the Steam Deck 2? And every time I'm like, this doesn't really matter. So again, the two games in question are Horizon Forbidden West and Dragon's Dogma 2. So Horizon, I just didn't buy on PC. I'm going to be honest with you guys. If you didn't know, I have another channel called PS Ready that's all about PlayStation. If I'm going to play a first party Sony title that's open world and takes over 50 hours to complete, that is never something I, I would ever plan to pick up on PC, let alone try to play on the Steam Deck. I'm going to get a great experience on the PlayStation 5. It's locked at 60 FPS. And if I'm playing a game that long, I really want to play it on my couch in front of the TV. I can do that with my gaming laptop. I can take it upstairs. I can plug it into the TV with HDMI, but with PS Plus Extra and of course the physical complete edition of Horizon Forbidden West, I'd rather just have a physical copy that I can put on my shelf with my latest pickups, which are Final Fantasy VII Rebirth and Final Fantasy 16. And when it comes to Dragon's Dogma 2, I just don't think it's fair to criticize the Steam Deck for not being able to run that game specifically because it's not the Steam Deck's fault. That game is one of the rare games that Capcom puts out lately that is unfinished at launch. There's an issue where if you go into towns, people have come up with a solution to the CPU getting overloaded and dramatically dropping frames by literally figuring out which NPCs are not critical to the story of the game, and then they kill them and take them out of the town, and that actually fixes the CPU overload that causes the frame rate to drop. But if you go into the open world, there's all sorts of stuttering, there's all sorts of weird random frame drops, that's just on a main hard hardcore gaming PC, but then if you go over to the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, it runs either at an unlocked frame rate that's anywhere between 17 FPS and 50, which looks terrible and has insane frame stuttering and just terrible sort of camera tracking and frame pacing and all that, or you can lock the game at 30 FPS, which is not a lock 30 FPS, and once again, it's not frame paced correctly, so you get stutters, you get frame drops, you get weird stuff when you're running all around the world. So to look at the Steam Deck, and be like, is it bad that the Steam Deck can't run this game? Uh, I would argue that it's bad that Capcom put the game out on consoles and PC in this state, so it doesn't really affect the Steam Deck overall. It would be nice if it was an Elden Ring situation where the two best places to play Elden Ring were the PS5 running the PS4 version or the Steam Deck because of the fixes Valve implemented before the Steam Deck came out, but the game just seems to be too big, too grand, too unfinished to actually run right on any hardware you throw it at these days. And that really sucks for me personally because uh, I talked about it here on the channel, but I played through Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen in January entirely on the Steam Deck and it was a phenomenal experience. It was like one of the best open world RPGs I've ever played and the only reason I'm okay to wait for one of my most anticipated games of the year to get some patches and be finally finished is that everything I've seen about Dragon's Dogma 2 makes it look like more of a remake and less of a sequel. Like it's the same game again with better graphics, but pretty much the same enemies You've got more vocations, more combat opportunities with those vocations, but I saw people on Twitter being like, Dragon's Dogma is advancing gaming because you can climb up the Cyclops and do more damage if you stab their eye. And I was like, I did that like a hundred times two months ago in the first game, which is 10 years old. So I'm excited for it. I think I'll just benefit more from giving it some room to breathe and like, then I'll miss it and I'll be able to go back and play the second game when it's finally finished. And again, as far as Horizon Forbidden West goes, if you don't have a PS5 or you really want to play this game on the Steam Deck. Timo from Overkill.wtf, he was able to figure out how to get a pretty much locked 30 FPS in both the main game and the graphically intensive Burning Shores DLC, which if you didn't know, only came out on the PlayStation 5. It was not released for the PS4 version of the game because it had huge graphical upgrades and actually runs a little bit worse than the actual main game. He's claiming he was able to get a pretty much hard locked 30 FPS. So if he hasn't released that article yet, I'm excited to check it out. So yeah, one of the two big games does actually run well 
well on the Steam Deck and the other one doesn't run well on anything. So it's not really the Steam Deck's fault. And it's really ironic because out of all my consoles, my main PC and my Steam Deck, the Steam Deck's where I put most of my game time in lately. My brother's been staying with me. He's living down here in the basement where my PS5 Slim is. I don't want to take up the TV and play Rebirth while my friends are hanging out here. I don't, I, like, I'd rather put on a movie or a TV show or something or a YouTube video. So what I've been doing is playing on my Steam Deck. I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Remakes Hard Mode. I've been playing Crisis Core. I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV. And then on my ROG Ally, I've been playing Destiny 2. So I have many opportunities to keep playing the Steam Deck despite the fact that it's slowing down and being left behind by gaming. That's just clearly not what's going on here. And I'm sorry if you can hear the sawing. I have a handyman here putting up a door two floors up. I thought it wouldn't come through, but it's very clearly coming through. The one bummer I've had recently with the Steam Deck that once again is not the Steam Deck's fault at all is that when I'm at the gym, my main cardio is I walk at a 10 incline and I try to do at least 30 minutes a day, but sometimes I get sucked into games on my phone and I sit there for over an hour just burning off calories. Like if you're looking to lose weight quick, do this. Just set the incline to 10, set the speed to 3.0, figure out a mobile game you can play on the treadmill and walk. You will burn 700 calories in an hour, which is absolutely insane. So anyway, I've been playing Final Fantasy VII when I do this walk and when I come home, I always want to keep playing it because it's just that good. And because you can't transfer the saves off the iPhone unless it's jailbroken, I've had to resort to using my 12.9 inch iPad Pro and then I play the game with a dual sense. And it is a good experience, but obviously I'd rather play the game on my Steam Deck. But if I had just waited a little bit longer, I could have had my dream scenario where I play Final Fantasy VII at the gym and then I come home and play it on my Steam Deck when I'm sitting on the couch or in my backyard when the weather's nice and everything like that. Because Apple just announced that emulators are going to be allowed on the App Store again. So immediately my mind went to RetroArch because it has cloud save. So what I could have done, instead of buying it for $15 on my phone, a game I already own physically on PS1 of course, is just emulate it on my phone, utilize those cloud save features, emulate it on my Steam Deck and have the save download and be ready to go on there when I get home. It sucks that it sucks that one of the main games I wanted to play is one that I'm not going to be able to take advantage of this with because I'm already at Cosmo Canyon in the original game and I'm not replaying all of that on a Steam Deck and uh, emulated save and once again I can't get the save off my phone anyway. But after I'm done with Final Fantasy 7 I want to get through Final Fantasy 6. I want to get through Final Fantasy 4. Like there are plenty of other games that I want to play through. So I will be taking advantage of these emulators whenever they start popping up on the App Store. So yeah I see these articles pop up every time a new big game comes out and it doesn't run on the Steam Deck and once again as usual it really comes down to the game and not necessarily the Steam Deck's underpowered chip. That brings us to the second news story here which is all about a Steam Deck competitor that's dead on arrival. So there's this new operating system called Playtron that was announced around a month ago and it's going to be on different hardware. We'll talk about the hardware in a second and what Playtron seems to be doing instead of making a Linux offshoot like Valve did for the Steam Deck they're making their own offshoot of Windows and the benefit there is that you'll be able to log into Steam, you'll be able to log into the Epic Game Store, you'll be able to log into the Xbox Game Store and play your Game Pass games natively and because it's a fork of Windows it should work with online games like Destiny 2 or the very few others now that don't allow you to play online because of the way the Steam Deck is sort of emulating Windows. And honestly I don't have a problem with Playtron. I think that's a really cool idea if it actually comes to fruition and works out. I'm pretty sure they kickstarted it. I'm not sure if they reached their goal but the first hardware manufacturer that's going to support this device is called Mistin Labs. I don't know what the hardware is. It could be amazing. It could totally run laps around the Steam Deck but the reason I will not buy this at launch is because it involves the blockchain. I don't even fully understand what the blockchain does. I just know that when hardware utilizes it it's generally nefarious and I just don't want any part in it. I have many other options like the ROG Ally, the Lenovo Legion Go, even maybe the MSI Cloth. I'm feeling crazy like I want to get some Intel gaming and really pull my hair out all night trying to do tech support on this handheld that costs hundreds of dollars. But yeah, I have plenty of other options that don't include the blockchain. So I don't know. I know people are excited about Playtron. It could be cool, but when, like having their first hardware partner be involved with the blockchain and Web3 and everything like that, that just puts a really sour taste in my mouth. And I don't even understand why you would want to do that. Speaking of the ROG Ally, it recently got a price drop down to like $500, which is an absolute steal for that hardware. And I hope you didn't get that deal because I've been seeing on Reddit lately that there's open box deals at Best Buy that drop the Z1 Extreme Edition all the way down to 400 bucks. If you have a Steam Deck or you want to get into Windows handheld gaming for something like Destiny 2, I, I only go to Destiny 2 because that's the only game I remember that uh, doesn't allow you to play online on the Steam Deck. I feel like for 450 bucks, 
bucks, it's totally worth taking the gamble. And because it's open box, you get a pretty decent return policy from Best Buy. So if you've been curious about trying out Windows handheld gaming, I don't really think you could go wrong picking up an ROG Ally for that price. When I had the ROG Ally up and operational, I was using it with their external graphics card. It was a 4090 and I got good performance in most games, but then other ones like Diablo 4, uh, Starfield and Remnant 2, it totally shat the bed. So I ultimately just ended up biting the bullet and I bought a razor blade with a 4090 in it and I absolutely love it. But it's cool to know that the option is there and they do have cheaper options for the XG Mobile than that 4090 one and you can get them open box for a really good price. So if you're looking into getting into Windows gaming, I can't recommend the ROG Ally at that price enough, but if you're willing to spend a little bit more, I do personally like the Legion Go a little bit better. If you run it at 1600p and then use integer scaling, it'll run the game internally at 800p and whatever that scaling does is pure magic and it looks really good on that huge bright screen. I also like that the main chassis of the tablet is aluminum. A lot of people use it as a media device because it has a built-in kickstand and the first person shooter mode where you can pop off the Joy-Con that's not a Joy-Con and use it as a mouse is honestly really cool. And unlike the ROG Ally, it does come with a case just like the Steam Deck. Anyway, that brings us to the third news story here, which is all about Fallout. So I don't know if you guys have seen it, but the Fallout show is phenomenal. I don't like that it's retconning lore relating to the NCR, New Vegas, and the New California Republic. I really don't like what they did there, but outside of that, it's a great show. I personally am glad they brought back the Enclave. I think that's sweet, but the one looming thing that everyone's been waiting for is the long awaited next gen update for Fallout 4. And today Bethesda announced that it would be coming out very soon. The release date for it is April 25th. It adds in a 60 FPS mode. It adds in ultra wide support. It adds in technical fixes, quest fixes, bug fixes, all the great stuff that we've been waiting for with Fallout 4. It also adds in a full new free Enclave quest line, which is awesome for me as someone who really loves the story in Fallout 76. But at the very tail end of the article, they say that Fallout 4 will finally be Steam Deck verified, which is awesome. Now I know that doesn't really mean that much, like verified and unsupported doesn't really matter at the end of the day because plenty of unsupported games work just fine and plenty of verified games run like absolute shit on the Steam Deck. So it's not really a great metric to figure out if the game is going to work right or not, but it is a nice thing to see them coming back to this game and saying, yeah, even though Microsoft is our overlord now and they're going to make us support their eventual handheld, we're still supporting the Steam Deck in the meantime. I have this game set up on the Steam Deck. It runs really well. You can basically run it maxed out and lock it at 30 FPS and it will virtually never drop. There are ways to lower the settings enough to get it to run at a lock 60, but then even when you go into some buildings, it'll drop to 50 or if you use a mini nuke or something like that. This is just a game that I recommend running at 30 FPS. And if you're someone who likes playing with mods and you notice that Nexus Mod Manager is not available for Linux, there is an alternative called Mod Organizer 2. There's a great video from Oh No, It's Alex that explains the entire process in like five minutes. I got that all set up for New Vegas, Fallout 4, and uh, Skyrim, and it works absolutely fine. You just drag and drop the mods in the same way you do on Nexus on PC. So if you're like me and you got back in the mood for some Fallout, I would definitely recommend checking out Fallout 4 on the Steam Deck. It is a phenomenal experience and one definitely worth taking on the go. Anyway, guys, that's all I've got for you today. Make sure you let me know what you think down in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and set your notifications to all if you haven't already. As always, my name is Jimmy Champagne. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching and shape on.